Coming up next on Rugby Wrap-Up, John Quill and Zach Vinolio of the Glendale Raptors. Brought to you by Friends of the British Council. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy at the Fantasy Sports Network, Studio 34 in Midtown Manhattan, talking rugby. And again, we are talking Major League Rugby because there's a Major League Rugby Championship coming up. I've got Steve Lewis here. He's excited. I've got Martin Pengeli. He's even more excited with his daughter's headphones on. And we've got none other than two stars that are going to be playing in the first ever Major League Rugby Championship, the MLR Championship in San Diego. Mr. Zach Fenoglio, who is not Zach Fenaglio, and Mr. John Quill, who is not looking for a pen. Anyway, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Brought to you in part by Afia Sports Training Group. Uh, John, we'll go to you first because I got a major beef with you. And that's probably not a smart thing for me. Uh, You were on crutches. And I saw you in a wheelchair. And I said on this show with Ryan Ginty, who also backed me up on it, that it was unfortunate for Glendale because they were going to be without their asset, their hard man, John Quill. Yeah. Well, fortunately, that's not the case. Um, got a bit of a scare in the Scotland game. Um, whatever way my knee went in, I thought I was in big trouble, but it uh, turned out to just be uh, some ligament strain and some nerve damage. It was a quick recovery. Hey, listen, it was great to see you out there, but uh, I'm going to take up my issue with uh, Dr. Matthew Clark Kent Schmitz as well, because he certainly put the fear of God in me. Uh, Zach... Again, you're, um, you've been all over the, the pitch like your teammate John Quill this season, uh, and you're working full-time. Is that not accurate? I am working full-time, yes. I'm actually just in between uh, some meetings right now. But uh, I, I, it's, been, uh, it's been an amazing season so far, and um, you know, massive credit to what the guys did this, this summer tour with the Eagles to, to get that scalp against Scotland. Um, some big momentum building here in the States. Are you ticked off at Quill for being back with the team now because you got to go back to hooker? <laughs> uh, it's good. I, uh, I just stretched out the jersey a little bit for him so it could fit in his biceps. So uh, that's what I was just doing for it. Excellent. Excellent. Steve? Yeah, so, gents, first off, congrats on the win. Great win. Um, you're in the final. So to your point there, Zach, about uh, having a full-time job, um, how does Glendale as a team – uh, incorporate the part-time guys and the full-time guys. I mean, how do you how does your sort of weekly planning go? How many sessions do you get together, basically? Yeah, you know, it, I think it's it's tough um, in, in in the kind of growing stages of any professional league where you're making that jump. And um, you know, Glendale and Davey and, and the coaching staff have been very very accommodating for us that are working full time. Um, you know, my goal and I think everybody's goal is to have it switch to where you don't need guys like me and it goes to 100 percent full time. And I think that'll definitely happen over the next few years. And it's exciting for that um, aspect, but to still be involved and still be able to play and contribute, and be a part of this, um, you know, monumental start for, for rugby in America is uh, is very special. And so, um, you know, we, we get anywhere from two to three sessions a week with all the full time and part time guys together. Um, you know, and then different guys have that are part time have flexibility in their schedule to try and break away at times as well. So we try and get at least two full team sessions together a week. And then uh, outside of that, you know, we're, you know, the part time guys were caught trying to play catch up on our own. Um, but resources are available now with online uh, video rooms and everything to where we can watch film from training, everything like that. So, you know, we don't miss out on a whole lot of the review portion. We film all of our reviews so we can watch them and, and stay up to date on all the conversations. Yeah, so you guys are not practicing five, six times a week. You're you're only in getting together three, four times a week. Is that accurate? Uh, well, the full time guys are training, um, you know, multiple times a day. Um, you know, pretty much every day throughout the week. So full time guys are definitely getting their uh, their fair share of uh, Davy time in um, with the rest of the coaching staff. But uh, the part time guys, you know, from from full on full team session. Uh, unfortunately, it's just two to three times a week. Ryan Ginty just uh, schooled me about the uh, the strength of the of the Glendale defence. I wonder if you could just tell me how much time is spent in the full time training that you're doing on on defence training these days, and what kind of um, what kind of work you're doing there. Um, quite a bit. Um, 
like with most teams, we have our preview from the week before. So there's definitely defensive aspects we have to go through, see if we accomplish what we were set out to do during the week previous. And then um, we review um, the, the team that we're about to come up against and their tendencies um, and how we can combat those, what we need to do um, going into the weekend. Um, and then throughout the week, you have at least two sessions completely focused uh, defensively. Um, one with just full timers and then at least one uh, with the part timers um, included in it. Um, so yeah, quite a, quite a large portion of it um, because I mean, the, the league that we're in, there's a lot of points being scored, um, which is exciting. But uh, for our perspective, we want to try and limit as much as possible, um, especially with teams um, like Utah, we just went up against who can just score from anywhere. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, but you know what? You, we could talk about defense here, but with, what's, what's pretty interesting is that you two have been across the whitewash about a zillion times this season. And, John, you would have been part of one of an ep, one of the most epic tries I've ever seen had Mika Kruse not knocked it on at that last second after his long run and kick. And aside from not even on you know, being on my radar as playing, the guy ran like 60 meters and knocks it on just before as he's getting hit. And there you are in the try zone, in the back, dotting it down just in case. I mean, what do what you got, jets on or something? You're flying around. You're supposed know. to be hurt. <laughs> I just try and keep up with the fast guys. Uh, eventually, sometimes they drop and I can pick it up and just fall over the line. So I just chase them and hope for the best period, pretty much. <laughs> I literally, I'm watching that, and I'm literally, is that is that Quill diving in the back? And I, I'm like rewinding it. And it was, it was, that, was that massive play where... Bruze just shows a ton of athleticism, chases down his own kick. He just gets hit a little bit as he's trying to field his own ball on the try line, and he knocks it on, and then, but it trickles in, and you weren't sure if it was a knock-on or not. And there's Quill running, running 50 it's, meters with these guys. Sounds like the beginning of a bromance here. It is, no, it's, it's, this, is long, this is long in the works, man. So, John, just, just to keep on the technical side of things, if we could just stay there for a wee bit. So, obviously, your coaching team, you've got Dave Williams as your, your main man. You get Teddy, the sort of um, doesn't know whether he's Irish or English. Uh, Browner, helping you. Who, who else is helping out with uh, your your day to day or your weekly stuff? Or is that or is um, it those two? Well, was, it, it's primarily those two. Um, I they do the bulk of the work. I mean, they're wearing a lot of hats this season. Um, whether it's Davy, defense, attack, um, head coach, strength and conditioning coach, Teddy forwards manager coordinator um and then there's just the the pretty much the medical staff after that um every we have uh, add-ins uh people or lays for scrummaging um dustin uh james for skills um but other than that it's kind of those two boys doing the bulk of the work with a, a large contribution from um these players because there's a lot of experience within our ranks um so that, that helps massively. What is, what is the biggest transition or the most difficult thing for you as the part-time player when you guys get together with the full-time players? Because you have – there's more than you that's a part-time player in the starting side, right? Yeah, we've got a, we've got a fair, fair amount of part-time guys that have to you know, make sure we keep our continuity and growth and building um, with the full-time guys. So, you know, it's the, the, the experience. Um, struggles of making sure that things that are discussed in the morning and, and everyday trainings are carried to the full-time sessions and so um, you know I, we're lucky enough to have an online video base where we can all get together and, and, and watch film of training of previous games um, and then our, our video staff actually he puts together um, starts filming our actual review sessions. so even though I'm not able to be there physically I can go back and, and watch our entire review that the, the coaches and players put us through, and so then I don't miss any of the conversations that happen um, in the day to day. Do you have to have John interpret for you when Dylan Dylan Fawcett speaks, or or can you fully understand Dylan Fawcett at this point? I, I'm I'm pretty uh, pretty fluent in the butch now, so I, uh, I I don't need a translator. And and John, I got well, I'm gonna, before Martin and Steve ask you another question. Uh, you. You got the butcher in Dylan Fawcett. You got the baker in you. 
Any candlestick makers on the squad? <laughs> That's actually quite um, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Will McGee thinks he's a bit of a candlestick maker, but I don't know. Yeah, it's good choice, good oh, choice. There you go, there you go. Yeah, so Zach, um, back to you. Well, obviously, Dylan Fawcett, they're a player I know pretty well, and I obviously know you pretty well. So uh, you guys are just comfortable slotting back and forth. Um, is there any particular reason why one would start one place and one and as hooker and one would start in the back row, or is it just week to week? Uh, how, what's the reasoning, or is there any rationale behind that? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we've been lucky enough to um, have, have have some solid strength and depth at the hooker position, where I think that's been a, a other teams, um, you know, and then the versatility of, of being able to have a slot in um, at other positions a lot. So, you know, I think it comes up to the coaches and what they feel most comfortable with and the predictions for each week and they're kind of thinking our advantages and disadvantages would be. Um, but, you know, Butch and I are both on the same page that we just want to do what's best for the team and. Um, we're willing to wear whatever hat we have to that specific week to get the job done. So if that means putting the best eight out with us in a different position than usual, then we do that. Um, so we've been very, very much on the same page in that regard and just willing to do what, what we need to do to get to the point where we want to get to. Diplomatic answer. Where would you rather, where would you rather play? Because it looks like you, you, you like putting the ball down in the try zone. <laughs> I, hey, I, I'm lucky enough to, uh, to find it. Um, due to a lot of other people's hard work. So like, uh, like Quill said, we're just trying to play opportunistic rugby where we take advantage of the hard boys' work. Can you weigh in on this at all? Is there, you know, I'm asking you for a little inside info. Which one of these guys wants to play hooker? Because Fawcett always swears that he's a hooker, and then you never see him play hooker. And he's a hooker, but he's playing flanker and, and loving it. What's your take on all this? As Zach said, I mean, the two boys do want to do what's best for the team, but I, I, I'd imagine the two of them want to be wearing a number two on their back. So it's, 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 it's enjoyable to see, um, like, as, a, as a, a guy that doesn't have to go for that position, thank God, because that is not an easy jersey to get right now. But, I mean, when you put either of them in the back row, they're very dy dynamic, they love carrying ball. So for me, I don't mind. Put either one with me in the back row, I'm happy. Yeah, you and you have you have been smiling a hell of a lot more in the, in in the last two seasons that I've ever seen you smile. Talking of smiling, I'm wondering um, how many people are likely to go with the team down to San Diego this weekend from the Glendale area. If they've any idea of a sort of uh, how much of the community is going to transplant in terms of attendance, it's it's hard to know. Um, to be honest, um, we have been getting good crowds, especially last weekend with the two semis being there. Um, the house was pretty much packed out. It was great atmosphere, um, but it is quite a trek, especially year one. People aren't like unless your family or friends and stuff like that aren't fully invested. I wouldn't I wouldn't say, um, but we're just happy to get as many as we can get down there. Um, I know there's a bunch of guys bringing family. Uh, and all that kind of thing. So um, it'll be a good atmosphere regardless because of the occasion. Best of luck this weekend, guys. It's a great occasion. Followed you guys for a long time, and you're both playing stellar rugby. And uh, good luck this weekend. Likewise, good luck. All right, I, guys, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of both of you guys, as you know. Uh, so I got to ask you, I got to put you on the spot. What, what's the prediction for the match? <laughs> a great occasion. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Good answer, son. <laughs> Okay. It's going to be a massive step for, for rugby in the U.S. It's going to be a good, a good time, good experience. All right. Now, no pressure, but uh, the wife's here, and we are putting the mortgage on Glendale to, to run the, to my hat right here in front of me, right, right here, Glendale Raptors hat. Go Raptors. And on that note, my friends, we will see you next time on Rugby Wrap-Up on behalf of Mr. Steve Lewis, Mr. Martin Pengelly, Mr. John Quill, and Zach Finolio. I'm Matt McCarthy at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in New York City for Rugby Wrap-Up, signing off.